Yeah, we'll try to do this one as fun as possible, but it's a really, it's a really serious point. Fried chicken. <laughs> yes, fried chicken. Is fried chicken proof of ancient black Hebrew Israelite history? No, fried chicken is not proof of ancient Hebrew, and we say black Hebrew or Israelite. We the black people, you know, it's, it's not it's, it's not proof like this meme right here goes into. So we're going to try to keep this as um, for this Black History Month as, um, you know, it's kind of funny if, if you understand the joke. It's kind of funny, but it's sad because many ones and ones, they read these sort of memes or come across these memes and they take these memes as actually true. So we actually have a meme for their meme. And the meme is beware of these, quote, born big, quote, end quote, black Hebrew Israelites and many of the one West, quote, half truth, end quote, or half baked memes. <laughs> Speaking of baked, right? Half baked fried chicken. So here we're talking about fried chicken, right? Fried chicken. How do you know Israelites are black? <laughs> Some, as this meme here says, because of fried chicken, fried chicken. Now, let's go into it right here, here, here. Okay, so, so here's a quote from Leviticus, Leviticus 2 and 7, just to see the fuller, that's the full meme right there, right? So we're going to zoom in right here on the alleged quote right here. Well, the quote, but the, the alleged reference to the fried chicken. Right, to say, how do you know that the Israelites, speaking about we, the Hebrews, black people, so-called black peoples here, black and brown peoples here, how do you know that we were and are Israelites? What's the connection both past and present with our Israelite heritage? Now, some of the one Westers, right, what we call the born big Israelites, what, 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 what do we say born big? Well, the scripture says, um, Robeno. Our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Notri, Yeshua of Nazareth, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Robeno, respectfully speaking, he says, unless one is what be born as a child, unless one becomes as a child again, as a child again. So this is a phrase, expression that we picked up on, or one said, like, you know, I wasn't born big. You know, I don't know if you heard that or ones are familiar with that sort of expression, born big. But we're all born as a child, right? all born like small, like as a child, we have to grow, grow, grow in grace. So growing up, so some are born big, right? They just become an Israelite or become aware, right, of our common Israelite heritage, the basic. This is why we say half truth and half baked, right? But then in tune with this particular meme right here, that's another subject matter we're about to address too as well, Right? seeking to address some of these memes and also to advocate as we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah and here in this Rastafari Yeshiva you know we Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews as we study the Torah, right, the Torah reading and feeding, right, the sabbatical studies from Shabuah to Shabuah Shabuah is like the seven days or what ones would call the week I and I Rastafari call the strong, sabbatical strong, and being strong in Jah word and truth and life and the Torah teachings of the King of Kings Christ. So as we go through the Torah readings and feeding, what was interesting is that you grow, you grow in grace and the knowledge, right? And then we recall also, was it Romans? Is it Romans to speak about some of these and those, the one Westers and those who kind of like emanate from that one West, We're talking about like the 1960, 67, some say, um, from our research between 67, 69, but we can sum it up to 70, the 70 AD, the 1970 AD Israelites that come from the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge or the fuller name, the Israelite School, I-S-U-P-K, and some of the other groups that we and many of us are familiar with today, especially with social media, right? But the core right the core truths of what the different various black hebrew and israelite camps the the common there's some common denominator truth we want to state that on the record right here to our fellows you know of different camps you know my father's house is many mansions that 
the, the common denominators of who we so-called black and brown, reddish brown, black and brown people over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, Caribbean, the trans-Ethiopian ocean slave trade, because there was no such thing, it wasn't called the Atlantic Ocean, so it can't be the trans-Atlantic Ocean slave trade, but must be the trans-Ethiopian ocean, thus bringing Amos 9 to 7 to mind from the scripts, Amos 9 to 7, right? To the Torah, mm -hmm. to the Torah, right, and to the you know to the testimony, the law, and to the testimony, right? Are ye not as the children of Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So many of the 70 A.D. the latter, you know, the ones that we are here critiquing, we're critiquing here the half truths in their memes. Right now, first when we saw this right here, we was like, oh, that's interesting because in our knowledge and study of Torah. Right, of John's direction and instruction. Here's why the real teaching. It's not good enough to say, okay, because you know, I'm an Israelite by blood. Well, there was many ones who were by blood. Even Esau could make that same claim. Esau could make the same claim, at least the same claim to being connected physically, right, with that family, but we know that spiritually, right, spiritually, he is he is a, a, a different, you know, a different, a different man of person. Right, so here let's address this meme right here, Romans chapter Romans chapter ten, where it speaks on the apparent failure of the promises to Israel, because we are the ones lost now found over here who have this four hundred year, this collective, this collective experience, this prophetic and pathetic in some ways, especially for those who don't want to admit the truth, but this prophetic experience over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, right? after a period of 400 years, right? But here, it says the apparent failure of the promises, the yea and the amen to Yisrael is explained by their, their unbelief, their lack of faith, right? But here in Romans chapter 10, just to share this right here, and we can get into this meme, why is this incorrect? Why is this particular meme incorrect? I'm trying to think of a name or a subject line, like, um, Fried chicken, you know, eating fried chicken don't prove you're Israelite. I don't know if that's a, what, what, what you think about that one right there. You know, we know that we're going to have something to articulate this, but we're just going through this meme right here and hopefully it develops. But on the fried chicken, right, because some in reading this particular verse, here Leviticus 2 and 7 and 2 and 8. So in Leviticus, third book of Moshe, Hebrew book, that's known as Wayikra, Wayikra in the ancient pointing, Wayikra. Right, and he called in modern Hebrew, it'd be said as Vayikra, Vayikra, but ancient pointing Vayikra, which is Leviticus, third book of Moshe, Hebrew book. Chapter 2, verse 7 says, And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. Now, many ones and ones, some of the Hebrews and Israelites, it depends on how this is titled, and if they check it out, they're going to be saying, he don't know what he, 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 he off. Yadin is off, right? Yadin is off. Yadin don't know what he's talking about. That's those Rastafarians. You know, they're going to say all sort of manner of things, but listen, please, listen. Listen, 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 Achim, Achim, listen, right? When you read this from English, just read this from plain English, seems to make sense. This meme right here. Right? How do you know the Israelites are black? And then we see a big picture of fried chicken. Fried chicken. And then there's a quote from Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 2 verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 says, And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And the next verse, verse 8 says, And thou shall bring the meat offering, that is made of these things unto the Lord, and when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. That's how ones and ones read it, right? That's KJV, the King James Version. Some, some of y'all, right, and some believe that the King James Version, right, even if we say, well, King James, right, has some relation to us or to our people. That's not the debate here, not the reasonment here, right? It's to believe that the translation, right, fully communicates 
right? The truth of the Hebrew scripture or is on the same par as the Hebrew scripture is ridiculous. And we're going to prove it's so ridiculous right here. Those ones and ones, right? Who get so caught up, right? On, you know, on the KJV version. Now, we're not saying not to use the King James version. We're saying what the scripture says to study to show yourself approved to Elohim, highlight him as a workman, right? That need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so i know a lot of ones may have been standing on this and proving to other we can say black people that well you're an israelite you see right here you see fried chicken right in leviticus chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 is speaking about fried chicken no it's not no it's not you're lost in translation or lost in mistranslation right here and this is why the word says Right. Even in the translation says to study, to shoe thyself approve. Right. So here, 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 let us make us make I and I prove this right here. Right. We just read through these two verses. Check, check. We're going to prove this right here before we even get to the proof of this right here. Let's go to this one right here. Um, here we go. We're, we're still in Romans chapter 10 in the Brit Kadasha, where it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for Yisrael is that they might be saved. Yes, my prayer for our fellow Hebrews and Israelites of, you know, the other, maybe other camps. You know what I mean? Whether they are, you know, more conservative Israelites or, or, or more, um, you know, liberal Israelites, you know, more more, you could say, more fanatical <laughs> or more moderate, you know, of whatever, you know, but as my fellow Israelites, you know, my father's house is many mansions. Our prayer is that we all might as Yisrael be saved, be preserved, but saved, even sometimes saved from ourselves or saved from our own ignorance, right? And this is why we need to put this out and this is why we're addressing this right here, right? Just to bring out a couple of points about the discipline that we ascribe to when we talk about the Torah studies, you know, and the Torah portions, what some refer to as the Torah portions. We call it the, you know, sabbatical mana, you know, the mana for that Shabuah, the mana, you know, the mana was the angel's breath. As the, as the Bnei Yisrael were traveling through the wilderness, they had this angel's breath. And then we get in the Brit Chadasha, Robain or Yeshua, Yeshua speaks about this manna, right, as the manna as they receive it, and this manna in the new and the living sense, so the angel's bread. But the Torah reading and feeding, where we go through, right, um, some chapters, right, from Shabuah to Shabuah, from week to week, we go through the Torah readings, right, in an orderly way based on a very ancient pattern, tracing us all the way to the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah, when that remnant, that faithful remnant of the black Jews, the black Yehudim of Persia, returned after the Babylonian captivity, right? So this same method of teaching is very instructive to us who have applied ourselves to that discipline. It's one thing to, you know, grab a couple of verses, right? Go out there, you know, and shout a couple of things at ones in the street and so on and so on. And you can say you're doing the real work, but the real work is also the study to see yourself approved. You know what I mean? Even if I pass to you some knowledge right here, right, and knowledge is right and accurate, you should study it so you can know and you can explain it, right, or you can know that truth for yourself and be persuaded, right? So I give you the knowledge, the information, right, accept it as being true, but get to know it. In other words, what's the saying? Um, trust but verify verify and a lot of us haven't verified so we see something like this right and we read over in a plain reading right we're reading this verse here as though it's a common thing you know like it's a common thing this is from the scriptures the Torah right which for us right who ascribe to this identity and this heritage it is a holy thing a set apart thing this means that we have to look at it in a holy way if you if you read this in the common sense you see meat offering right but here's the trick that the way the word meat was used in 1611 meat was used if you ever read shakespeare and if you ever study shakespeare see see once and once on the kjv it's a 1611 version right 1611 english like back in the 1700s how to use english is not how we use english today 
It's like if you study and go into Shakespeare, right? You get into Shakespeare's uh, plays and other things. It's written in a particular kind of language that even those actors or people who are so interested even in historical Shakespeare works because it was written in Shakespearean the, the English dialect. Ones have to study the language of the time in order to properly understand what the text is talking about. And the KJV, King James Version of the Bible, is from that, well, at least a little previous to, but roughly around, around that same period of time. The King James Version of the Bible is from that same period of time, and it uses language in a particular way. Like when it says, if thy oblation. We don't use the word oblation. Yeah, bro, you know, I, I had given my oblation the other day. Oblation. You know, I'm talking to my homie about oblation, unless they're applying themselves to this Torah discipline in the in the in the, in the studies, they're not gonna know what we're speaking about. And when you see meat offering, and you're reading this from a secular, a worldly mind, right? You know, a worldly perspective. See, it's standing in the holy place. This means that we're gonna go to the Hebrew on this, and we're gonna bring out why. This verse quoted from Leviticus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8 is not speaking about fried chicken. Right? It's not speaking about the meat offering of the Israelites is not fried chicken. I know you see what says meat offering bacon in the frying pan. That's what get that's what gets all of you. But you have to remember that this 400 years has done something to us. You ever read How to Make a Slave? Right? The Willie Lynch paper? You know, where it speak about um controlled language, the section sections in that speak about language and linguistics and what would be done or what the scheme was to be done right to break us from our heritage and to confuse us in the linguistics and remember we call this what babylon even in the chazon of yohanan or the revelation of yohanan of, of john's revelation it speaks about babylon and babylon at its root in the Torah, going to Genesis chapter 11, was about linguistic confusion, the confusion of tongues, the confusion of language. In the beginning is the word. The key thing is the word, right? What's the word? Word up. Word is important. And if we don't understand word, or if I use a word, right, in some way, and you don't understand what this word is, how can you rightly agree to that how can you rightly know or understand or apply what i'm saying the same thing goes when we're reading a 1611 kjv and it's not that we are advocating these other versions these other versions are worse at least with this version as we're going to show and demonstrate again right in this demonstration here that with the proper software the proper tools that are easily available into linear tools ones can study these things and check them out for yourself like we said, in 1611, they used the word meat for anything that is edible. It did not mean meat, as we have this even in Genesis. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, we speak about giving the green, the, the herbs, the vegetation, right? In Genesis chapter 1, you know, as meat. You're giving every green herb for meat. Well, how can a green herb be meat? It's because in the 1611 in Old English, the word for meat did not mean flesh. In fact, if you study the Bible and look at the Bible, we got to do a video on how to read, right? How to read the KJV Bible and not reading the KJV Bible in a foolish or an unlearned way. Right. So from the very beginning, when it talks about, see, this is why when we go to the Torah studies, we go through chapters by chapters. Right? And spend a whole Shabuwa, spend at least seven days and have aliyot, you know, readings of sections of Torah where we're able to zoom in and study. And we go through this from semester to semester, you know, from, from season to season and by going over these things. And I can testify as well, even recently, in a recent the 20th sabbatical study for Titzawe. Thou shalt command, coming up after the 19th Teruma, the offerings, you know, for the instruction, for the construction of the structure, the tabernacle, and all the various different items. As we go over it from Shabuah to Shabuah and season to season, our understanding and clarity, many of us making comments to each other, the Achim, the Chabarim, you know, Chan, you heard that there? You remember when it said this over there? And we're able to reference and as the word says, rightly divide the word of truth. In other words, rightly divide, we can go over here in scripture as we can go right here, we're talking about meat offering and prove with the 
Bible, Bible proving the Bible, especially even the translation, that meat was used in the KJV Bible for whatever was food or edible. Whatever was edible. Right? That's what meat meant in Old King James Version. But it did not mean flesh, or as I and I Rastafari would say, it did not mean debtors. It did not mean flesh. Whenever it's speaking about flesh in the scripture, it often mentions flesh or it mentions the animal. There's no animal that's mentioned here with the mincha. The mincha in the Hebrew is known as the mincha. Mincha, modern, in modern Hebrew, modern Jews will say mincha. You might hear them say minka, the minka, the minka offering. In the Hebrew, it's mincha, mincha, the mincha, the mincha. We're going to touch on that as well, but first let's touch on this particular verse right here. As we've just been pointing to it, Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire, I and I heart to desire and prayer to hila him. Ha Elohim, the true good, the true God, for Yisrael is that they might be saved, for I bear them racket that they have a zeal of ha Elohim, ha Elohim, of the power, but not according to da'at, not according to da'at, 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 da'at is knowledge, not according to the gnosis, not according to the science, science is the Latin scientius, scientia means knowledge, so we have knowledge in the English, we have science, scientia from the Latin to know, we have the Greek gnosis, right, where we get Gnostic from, and then in the Hebrew we have da'at, 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 sound like data, the divine data, knowledge. So here in the second verse, uh, Romans 10 and 2, it says, for I bear them record. So this is speaking of Israel. So you see the meme here is how do you know Israelites are black? And then you see a picture of fried chicken, fried chicken. Then there's a quote, right? There's a quote, right? To Leviticus chapter 2, verse 7 and verse 8. And if you are, you know, unlearned, you know what I mean? As it says, uh, what does it say in um, Hebrews, right? About, about the milk. Remember in Hebrews, it talks about the milk. Right, the milk, and then it says it uses the word meat right here too. Right, it says right here, of whom we have many things to say, hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. Most are dull of hearing. Most will dismiss what we're saying right here, but just for the racket, the truth is being presented right here, and whether you dismiss it or not, the truth still is the truth. For when, for the time, ye y'all ought to be teachers, ones and ones now running around teaching this. This is the proof. Read this here, and they read this. You know, somebody who thinks that you know as an Israelite what's going on, and you have applied yourself since you're teaching this. But it says right here in Hebrews chapter five, verse twelve: For for when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, y'all have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the Dibre Elohim. What be the first principles of the oracles of the words of the power? And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Now, even here in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, when it says strong meat, right? It's talking about solid food. Solid food. Solid food was strong meat, right? It doesn't mean that it had to be flesh, but it was solid food. It's like giving a baby an apple, right? Or giving them applesauce. Applesauce. Right, that's for a baby. Is is you know it's easy. It's, it's not solid. While well, an apple is is solid. Right, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. This is why we say there's a bunch of born big. Got a lot of born big, right? Israelites, a lot of born big Israelites. So we pointed to this verse right here, right, and then just doving this with Romans chapter 10. For I bear them record, right that they have a zeal of Ha-Elohim, of Ha-Elohim, or as they would say, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh, Ahaya, as some would say, right, or, or the Most High, right, they have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge, right, getting caught up on the emotionalism of kind of racialism. Yes, there's a point about the Israelites being melanated black and brown people. Yes, I, that, that is a point right there. But then it's kind of going beyond the point. So we're not dismissing the truth that many of the Hebrew and Israelites, the 
amongst we the black people, you know, the, the fundamental truths, right, of from Babylon to Timbuktu, those groundational truths of our identity, right? But then after that, one start to, in their zealousness, right, in their zealousness, be a record that is not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of Hilahim's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. See, this is establishing your own righteousness because most ones and ones seeing this, even when we first kind of glimpsed this, say, oh, wow, that's interesting. But then as we looked into the quote, we say, wait, a meat offering is not a flesh offering. It's not the, the meat, the minka or the mincha offerings called in translation, King James translation, the meat offering were bloodless offerings. There are like five types of offering. How do we know this from studying Torah? From studying the, the proper way, right? Not the overzealous way. Right? For they being ignorant of Elohim's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of Elohim. So here, here, here. How do you know the Israelites are black? Now this is, you know what's interesting right here? When I look at this particular meme, it's not because of the quote that they make here. The quote that they make here is misapplied. We're going to prove that next, that the quote that they make here is misapplied. But with the sense of those offerings, right, that, that are flesh or, or, or meat or animals, according to Torah, right? Those offerings that are flesh or debtors, right? Many of them, right, according to what is written in Torah, are to be fried, you know, are to be fired, you know, like, like fried, right? So the sense of, you know, um, um, fried, like what says, not sodden, like with the Passover, you know, the Passover lamb, you know, that, that, that's also fried. So there is a sense of fried with the offerings being fried. But this verse here in Leviticus 2 and 7 connecting so-called fried, using fried chicken as an example with the meat, what's called the meat offering shows that ones and ones are not studying. That ones and ones are not studying. Right? And ones and ones are taking the KJV, right? In spite of whether King James is black or not black, that's a whole other matter right there. But they're saying, okay, if he's black and a black man, so even if he's an Israelite by blood, that means that he's right? No, we have to look at what is being presented. So let's look at this that's being presented right here and let's get directly to the verse right here. Right? So here. Let's bring this up right here. So here we go. We have 35 verses in the Bible. We're looking up the word oblation. And if thou bring an oblation, remember the word oblation we don't use in common speech. Yo, bro, I got to bring this oblation, man. Yo, I'm late on my oblation. Yo, you got that oblation for me? We don't use that word. So what is oblation? H7133. It's korban. Right? Korban. Right? There are two recorded ways or dialects of saying this word in the ancient Afro-Semitic languages. One is as Korban and one is as Korban, Korban, Korban and Korban, Korban and Korban. Right? It's an offering. Let's get to the root right here. Right? And we get to the root Korban. A Korban is something brought near from the root Karab, Karab, Karab to draw near. Something brought near. So the key part that you see right here in the Strong's definition where it says brought near, that's bringing out the essence of the Hebrew korban, the, the word there. Now, the word, the altar, is now the context of it as found in Scripture. That which is brought near the altar, the mizbeach, right? That is like a sacrificial, that which is sacrificially, you know, a, quote, present. So the word korban is also present. So here in reading the strong, so ones have to learn how to read even the definition. Now a lot of ones getting into the, eta, the, the interlinear, you know, the Hebrew, say, etymology or the interlinear, you know, Bible dictionaries, you know, or Bible references. And what's the strong's word? And they're looking at the word isolatedly. This is still good that ones are going there. But then some conclusions when they say, well, look what strong's definition says. You know, that a korban is only something brought near the altar, right? Well, the word actually means to bring something near. The context now means an offering 
or a present that's brought near. Now, when you see the, 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 the colon, the two dots, and the hyphen, what comes after the two dots and the hyphen? Oblation. And what says that is offered or offering, this is how it is found translated in the King James Version. Because the King James Version is one of the only English versions of the Bible that you can pretty accurately compare with the Masoretic, you know, text, right? The existing Masoretic text and testify to Masoretic texts, Texas Receptors they call it, as well as the Koina Greek texts of the New Testament. So with the KJV Bible, the particular value and worth of it, structurally speaking, is as a point of reference. But many of the words translated and some of the phrases translated are not quite accurate and has led to a lot of foolish assumptions and conclusions and even some theologies and, and religious mumbo jumbo because of lack of understanding. Ones have superimposed their own mind instead of studying to shoot themselves approved and getting to know what's in Hashem, the divine, Yahweh, hey, what's in Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem's Jehovah's mind. But here, let's go to the H7126. Right, we have karab as we mentioned. The karab is the root, right? So the karab is the verb, right? To come near, to approach. There's there's the martial arts form that's known as krav maga. Krav, krav is from this root word krav. Modern Hebrew to say krav, krav. Ancient Afro-Semitic pointing, karab, 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 maga. Maga, like to, to draw near, draw near and, and, and kind of hit, draw near and, and, and strike, right? It has a sense of like drawing near and striking, what they call Israeli street fighting, so to speak, right? But we get to the root down here, the primitive root to approach. So the word karab is at the root of korban and korban, karab, something that's brought near. So as a noun, that which is brought near. This is all just to explain and bring out this sense of what oblation is. So it could have said, if thou bring, right, an oblation. Notice the word bring. The word bring is karab. If you karab a korban, right? If you bring something brought, and that something brought, the korban is that offering. So the more correct word, right, should really be, right, like an offering, right? An offering. Notice, if thou bring an offering of a meat offering. Now this chapter, Leviticus chapter 2, explains what's known as the mincha, the mincha, mincha, or the minka offering. The mincha, the minka offering is translated as the meat offering. But the mincha, the meat offering, according to KJV translation, meat offering is a meal offering. A better translation would be a meal offering, as the word meat, in this context of the translation, the KJV, right, has nothing to do with flesh. So this offering is one of the offerings that is a bloodless offering. So the minka is a bloodless offering. Here, let's go to the word. You see the H50, the H4503, after meal offering. You see the word mincha, mincha, minka, right? Modern Hebrew, mincha, mincha. A mincha is a gift, a tribute, an offering, a present, right? Go down there. Notice what it says right here as it breaks down what kind of offering it is. It's a gift, it's a present, a tribute, an offering as to Hashem, Ha'ilehem. A grain offering. You see the emphasis is grain offering, right? Grain offering. So it's a bloodless offering. That means it's a fleshless offering. The minka is a fleshless offering and is specifically a grain offering. A grain offering, right? A grain offering, right? The root idea of mincha is to bestow, right? From an uh, ancient unused root, like to apportion, right? To bestow, to donate, to tribute. Right. Notice down here. Here we go right here. You see what it says specifically? A sacrificial offering. Right. Usually bloodless. Usually it's bloodless. And we see from Leviticus chapter 2. Right. 
the context of the chapter is that it is a bloodless offering, right? Now notice they have offering and then they put meat, right? A meat offering. Let's go down here and let's see if we can. We saw it, I think we saw it right over here, right? Let's see. Meat offering. Okay, got the meat offering. Let's go to the top of the chapter, right? So Leviticus chapter 2. Here we go, right? First verse. Right, Leviticus chapter 2, proving that fried chicken is not the mincha. Fried chicken is not the mincha, is not the so called meat offering. The meat offering is a poor translation of what it really is. Right, or what it really is. So, and when any will offer a meat offering, now notice here we see the word meat and the word offering have two separate words. Two separate words. Let's look at the H450. Notice mincha. Notice how right here a meat offering, meat offering in the first verse of Leviticus chapter 2 is separated. When we go down here, right, when we go down here to verse 3, it says, and the remnant of the meat offering. Notice how the meat offering is one word. So in the first verse up here, right, in the first verse up here, notice this right here. Let's see if we can highlight this for 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 better for better um clarity you notice right here that these okay let's go over here you notice that this and the next word is two separate words h4503 and then we have the h7133 let's hit the h7133 you see the korban you see what happens here it says mincha and korban in the hebrew right here, when we get to like verse three, it just says it just says mincha. It already explains that the mincha, right? The mincha is one of the types of korban, one of the types of things that are brought near to the altar. The one things that are brought near, right? What you bring, right? So notice right here in the first verse, they separate meat from offering, right? Meat from offering. And the word meat is the mincha, as we already touched on the mincha. And the mincha, right here, as it says down here, usually a bloodless and voluntary. When it says bloodless, it meant that it is a grain offering. It didn't mean that, of course, we as Israelites are told not to eat or consume blood. Like we say literally, you know, the blood, right? We don't eat blood, right? You know, it, at best, it's... Blood in the in the Hebrew sense also is a euphemism, Hebraically a Hebraicism for wine. We see this in the Baraka to Yehuda to Judah. But here the Minka, right, is a bloodless to say a meatless, a, a fleshless, is fleshless, right. And if you go and you study, like let's go right down here right here. It says his offering shall be of what? So the Minka offering, la Yahweh to Jehovah. His offering, notice the same word, korban, is the 871.33, shall be a fine flower. What shall it be? What kind of animal would it be? A chicken? Does it say anything about chicken? That you get a chicken, ring off his neck, right? And then you fry chicken? It don't say anything about fried chicken. See, it's because of the, 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 the post-traumatic enslavement, enslavement of the lost sheep of the house of Israel over here in the Americas and Caribbean, that we, our ancestors, took the chicken and then and then put flour on it, you know, to do the fried chicken, you know, the procedure and everything. And this is how we know it. So here, ones are seeking to superimpose what we have done post-traumatic Slav enslavement disorder. And trying to say, oh, that's what that's what the Israelites were required. So we're doing the same thing when we're eating fried chicken. That's a minka offering, or that's a meat offering. No, that's not a meat offering, because a meat offering would just be presenting the flour, right? The fine flour by itself, without any debtors, without any flesh. This is what it says right here in the chapter, the full and the fuller full of the chapter that is referenced. And it's quoted over here. That we get reference and quoted over here. Let's go to the next meme right here. Let's see if we can get to the next meme. Right? Okay, there we go. There we go. So basically, this idea right here is false. 
this idea is false and this is a false meme. This is a false meme. This is why we say, beware of these born big black Hebrew Israelites and many of the one West half truth, half baked memes, right? Half truth. This is a half baked meme, right? That yes, the mincha or the meal offering, meal offering. So this means that the KJV, maybe back then, back then in 1611, they understood when they used the term meat, right? Right. What kind of meat did you have? And the person could mention fruits, vegetables, there didn't have to be no flesh because meat just meant in old English something that's edible, what you eat. And we know this from the very first. In fact, let's show this right here. Let's just show this right here. It's best to just show and prove, right? Show and prove. Let's go right here and let's go to the first mention of meat. Right? Let's go to the first mention of meat in the Bible. All right, just put meat right there. Meat in the Bible. You see right there? We have Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Every what? Every herb. You, do you know what an herb is? Right? An herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree. So he's given us every what? Tr herb and every tree. In which is the fruit, the what, the fruit, the, uh, the, the, the flesh, the fruit, no, the flesh, no, the fruit of a tree, of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Let's look at the word. It's the H. You see the word for meat right there? It's the H402. That word is okla. In the Hebrew, the word okla. Okla means food, eating. It means eating, consuming in the sense of consuming food right food right and also in the hebrew sense we have like a wild beast wild beasts are like eaters fire also right okla ash right ash okla like eating fire like fire consuming fire literally in the hebrew is eating fire fire that eats up and then also the sense of being eaten up in the hebrew sense in connection with the fire has a figurative connection of judgment but bringing it down here, we have okla. Okla is a part of speech. It's a noun feminine. It's a noun of the H401. You see where it says food. Food. Consume, devour, eat, food. And the last entry there is meat. And this is how it has been used in the KJV. But it's clear from the context when it says of every herb and of every tree, right? And the fruit, right? Of the tree, Right, and the herb and the seed, it didn't mention anything about any animal, it didn't mention anything about any animal or any flesh. Right, the root word right here is ukal. Ukal, ukal means to be devoured. Right now, getting into you know, ukal, like, like to devour, ukal by right? okla, right, and it's like from akal by right? akal, right, to eat, makal. Makel, like eating in that sense, right? So it's clear in the first instant, this is just to prove that in the King James Version of the Bible, meat usually is generally referred to anything that is edible or that is eatable as food and consumable as food. In the first instant, in Bereshith, right? In, in, in wisdom, right? In, in beginning, Right in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, it says that the herb bearing seed and the tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, it shall be for right, it shall to you, it shall be for food. Basically, basic translation according to the Hebrew, it shall be for food, right? It shall be for food. And this is the reason why, right here, when we get to this right here, we say that this is a false meme, right? This is a false meme. This is an overzealous meme, right? A better point could have been made just about this. Black people seem to have a propensity to fried foods, right? Fried foods. On one level, that is something that can be seen from the scripts to be very Israelite. A lot of the offerings had to be burnt, and there's an emphasis on it not being sodden, right? Like not being boiled, but, but being burnt, 
right? You know, even the, the, the ola, right? The burnt offerings had to be completely burnt, right? So this idea of crispy, <laughs> there is an idea of crispy in the offerings, especially the fire offerings, right? This is the fire offering. But this is not the same down here because right here, right? Now, it uses the term fine flour. Notice we use the term fine flour. So there's the mincha, the mincha, the minka, right? Which is a particular kind of offering that's baking in a frying pan, in the frying pan. That's what ma, um, 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 what's it, um, mare, um, Maharashet, Maharashet, I think that's the, the frying pan. Once one see frying pan and you see a picture of fried chicken, it's hard for you and even me, there's a temptation to, to make believe that this is what it's talking about. But once you study it, you begin to recognize this is not what it's talking about. As we have been showing and proving even right here in this particular um, demonstration right here. Let's go right here. And let's see if we can um, go back to the word oblation, right? This chapter here. There are five kinds of offering, right? There are five kinds of offering. And one of the offerings in the tabernacle, in the Mishkan, according to HaTorah, according to the Pentateuch or the books of Moshe, right? Especially here in Leviticus, one of them is a grain offering. So the Mincha the minka, what's called a meat offering, should be a meal offering, a meal offering. And what kind of meal it is, it describes it right here in the very first verse. His offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. That's the offering there. That is the minka. The minka is bringing forward fine flour, pouring shemen, oil on it, and putting frankincense, Lebona, right, Lebona thereon, and he shall bring it to Aharon's sons, Hakohanim, the priest, and he shall take there out his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor, la Yahuwah, to Jehovah. So let's overstand this right here. The minka, right? What is the minka? The minka is a grain offering. What is the grain? The grain will be a fine flour. Let's look at the word fine flour. Solet, right? Solet. This is what is offering, solet, right? Here it says like, yeah, flour. Flour and, or meal. You see what it says meal? Like cornmeal, you heard that like cornmeal, yeah, like cornmeal, corn, right? And 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 corn can be made into a flour, and this is what is offered, right? This is what is offered by the Bnei Yisrael. This is what was to be offered according to to Wayikra, Sefer Wayikra or Leviticus, and then it shows the procedure how be offered, right? Right to Aaron's sons, and he shall take. Right there out his handful, right, of the flour thereon and the oil thereof, all the frankincense, and, and the priest, right, the priest shall burn the memorial. So there's a memorial, Azkara, there's a memorial part, right, Azkara, right, the memorial part, the portion of the meal. You see what it says right here? So when you look in the notes, they clarify it now in the notes when we study. It's not meat to say meat flesh, but it's meat in the old way of using the word meal, food offering. There's a food offering which is to be burnt. So it's that grain, right? That grain, that remind, the remembrance, memorial, azkara, that is burnt upon the mizbeach to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor. So the point of the offering made by fire is that when the offering is made by fire, the smell of the of the fine flour, right? It smells very sweet, and as it ascends, as it goes up, right? Allah, right? Aliyah, Allah, as it goes high, 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 right? To Elyon, to, you know, to the Most High, right? It's a sweet savor. And the remnant of the minka, of the grain offering, shall be Aaron's 
and his son. So that, that is the remainder. So there was some that was taken off, a handful, right? You get it? A handful is taken off, put on the altar burn. And then there's the yatar, right? There is that which remains over. There's the excess, right? There's the excess of what is being brought forward and offering. That shall be Aharon, Aaron and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings, right? Notice right here. The word here for offerings is Isha. Isha. Isha is a burnt offering, a fire offering. We call it Isha is a fire offering. The Isha. Isha. A fire offering. This is a properly a burnt offering, but occasionally any sacrifice that is made by fire. So this is the Isha or the Ishe. The Ishe Yahuwah. The fire offering so here we're speaking about the fire offerings of jehovah or the offerings of jehovah made by fire and then it comes down here and if thou bring an oblation of a mincha right and remember it's the same word mincha it's the same grain offering that's bacon so you, you take like cornmeal it'd been better to present something like cornmeal you could present a cornmeal to make the point and say how are how like how do we know that the Israelites the Israelites are black? How we know Israelites are black? You could show cornmeal and use the very same quotes here from Leviticus chapter two. It would have been more accurate according to a proper interpretation of the scripture. And if thou bring an oblation of a minka baking in the oven, it shall be unleavened cake. So telling you what it is, it's chala, chala, the chala, not chala, but chala. Chala is the cakes. Cake. Cake. You know, making some cakes. <laughs> you know, and we know that we black people, we like cake, don't we? Right? In so many direct and metaphorical sense. But here, this is unleavened, right? Unleavened, right? Matzah. See the matzah? These are matzah cakes, right? Bread, cake, without leaven. That means without yeast. Without yeast not having any yeast, right? Unfermented cake, unfermented loaf of bread, right? Even with the Pesach offering, Pass or Fasica, because no leaven was then used, right? No leaven, right? And I saw something there where it's talking about sour. Remind me of some of the, like, the taif, Ethiopically speaking, the Israelites of Ethiopia, some taif. What's so something about sour? Where's the word sour? Our eye had glanced on something that had said sour right okay not soured or bitter no this is sweet so it's sweet it's not soured or bitter right this is what is offered so it's telling you in the fourth verse exactly what the offering was do you see any chicken here you see any fried chicken that do you see any fried chicken in this in, in this in these verses we're going to touch on a couple more verses here, but if you find fried chicken in this verse, please explain this. Explain it to all of us. See if it makes sense, right? It shall be unleavened cakes. So it should be cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or unleavened wafers. Or it's going to be wafers that's anointed. Rakik, the rakik, rakik, thin cake, a thin cake, a wafer, a thin cake. Right? In its original sense, a thin cake. Rakak, right? To spit, right? In other words, it's, 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 it's less, you know, when you're making like pancakes. You know, like when you're making pancakes, and somebody says you just put like a little spit in it, you put, just put a little drop. You don't pour it very heavy where you, you know, you could pour it heavy like when you do it. It's like pancakes. It's like pancakes right here. This is exactly what it is describing here in Ha Torah. It's not describing fried chicken. Right? If thy oblation be a minka, once again, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. So it continually is showing that if it should be like this, this is what kind of minka grain offering, fine flour offering. Thou shalt part it in pieces and pour oil thereof, thereon. It is a minka. Once again, the word minka. Right? If thy oblation be a minka. See, it's the same word. Some will say, oh, look, it says meat. So it's meat. It's like fry. You see fry and it's bacon in the frying pan. Well, you do more than just fry chicken in the frying pan. You can fry a lot of things in the frying pan. 
it shall be made a fine flour with oil. So you can see by the continuity, you the mar chashet. Mar chashet is like the saucepan. In a saucepan, a stew pan, right? A frying pan. It shall be made of fine, but tell you what's, what it's to be made of. Fine flour with oil, right? Like as we said, we're going to work on, have some of I and I co-laborers, if they can, work on one with cornmeal. They might present it with cornmeal. That's the more correct presentation. And thou shall bring the minka that is made of these things, la Yahuwah, to Jehovah, and when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar. So the process is one would present it to the priest. Like I come forward to bring my minka, I present it to the priest, and the priest now presents it, brings it to the altar. Right, and then it says the priest shall take from the minka a memorial, right, the azkara thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire, the ishe, of a sweet savor. So that means that as it burns, it has a sweet smell, la Yahuwah, to ja, right, to Jehovah. Now, this explains it right here, my brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, once again. This particular meme that you're seeing out there is false. It should have been cornmeal, right? And that's something that is very well known amongst the once lost, now found Beta Israel, the Bayit Yisrael here in the Americas and the Caribbean. We know about those cornmeal, right? Made in the pan. Make that in the pan and, and you add some oil. Right? Or even if you add some butter in place of the oil, you get the essential cooking idea. Right? So that's a better connection right there, as this right here does not match the Hebrew. But it points out the mistranslation. It points out the, um, the error in the... Tra it, 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 actually, it wasn't a mistranslation back then, but for us today, not being... Um, I says you, you desire to be teachers, you need to be taught about this, and hopefully this is a good teachable moment, right? Addressing this right here, and this is actually, this is actually what we was going to share right here. Beware of these born big black Hebrew Israelites and many of the one West half truth, half baked memes, and that's one of the first, well, one of the first in a, hopefully a series that we'll seek to address. And we address this out of no enmity to I and I fellow brothers, you know, of different camps. We already say we agree on the core truths of us once lost, now found, black and brown people here in these Americas and Caribbean being Israelites because of the prophecy and because of the history, right? But it's iron sharpening iron right here. These points right here we have to get with the real Torah studies, right? Really get into the studies. You know, we don't have to prove anything to the nations. What we need to do is to prove in Yahweh, hey, Yahweh's in his sight, right? And the way we seek him is seeking him by his revealed revelation. The revealed revelation is Ha Torah. So beware of these born big, because Yeshua HaMoshiach says that must be as a child again, right? So even after recognizing, yeah, we be the Israelites, you know, look what they did. They tried to take this. You have to get off of all that hype, that hype is zeal, and get into you know the the knowledge right get into the knowledge let's go right here and see if we can let's see if we can find this particular verse right here it's probably a few verses we're going to zoom all the way to the new covenant right the new covenant right here scripture so let's go down here right here and let's see where we're at let's go he called the little ch little child Remember that one right there when he called and Yeshua called a little child to him, when Robainu called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily, Amen, I say to you, except ye be converted, have a change of mind, right? Converted from that stray way, thinking that just looking at the KJV and it says meat, it must mean meat. All right? You have been warned. This is like just put us on warning. Iron sharpen iron. And become as little children. Little children. So when we say born big, right? It's like one just become an Israelite last week. Already they're out there regurgitating things they haven't even studied to find out whether they're really true. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of Shemaim. 
the kingdom of the heavens right and then we go over here right just to says right here 18 and 4 right whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of Shemaim it means humble that yeah I, I know what I think this verse means but let me go and check it out or if a next brother or sister has checked out that verse and is pointing out the details of it right and I recognize that it's right and true to humble as a little child that means be teachable right be teachable because you can be of the blood right as Israel you could be of the blood right but that don't mean that you're of the spirit right as we already know and should know from the testimony from the Brit Yeshana to the Brit Chadasha. 18 and 5 said that whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me so we are even encouraged to receive those who are like newcomers you know so to speak you know as like born again Hebrews and Israelites to receive them as they are to be as a child in other words teachable right and we are to receive them as even Yeshua himself right in other words as Robeno himself right and over here suffer suffer the little children and forbid them not to come to me for such is the kingdom of Shemaim you remember when many of us were little children we asked some of us you know going through the Western Gentile Christianity or Pentecostal as my experience was somewhat Pentecostal with ones and ones I asked some questions and sometimes you ask questions and people always think oh you're trying to be you think you're so smart like as a little child you know what I mean sometimes uh, some of us in the black experience black history month in the black experience where we want to really ask questions about the professed faith or theology or whatever ones are not open to that we see this verse here in 1914 of Matthew as saying suffer the little children who I notice that sometimes even today that there be ones and ones may have youth so there may be a little child and a little child over here speaking and he asks some question and it's one of those questions that if you are receptive to it right it's like Yeshua said you might know, receive the little child and if you receive them you receive him right but many ones sometimes because a little child is gonna you know it's been hidden from the wise and prudent reveals the babes and suckling the little children kind of questions are the real good questions I just want to point that out you know even though sometimes I've been approached by little children questions not from little children literally but ones and ones and so I'm like wow and they, and they might feel like, oh, I know I shouldn't be asking this and everything, but, you know, I'd say I encourage them, go on. That's what it says, suffer the little children to come to me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of high Elohim, of the true good, the true God, the Hebrew tri-unity. Verily I say to you, whosoever shall not receive, right, the kingdom of high Elohim. Look what it says, the kingdom, which is the consciousness of the true good, the true God, high Elohim, right, as a little child shall not enter into in, enter therein so you could be a hebrew or an israelite according to blood but not in the brit kadash the new covenant consciousness the new covenant consciousness so yes you can boast by being of the flesh but you're not of the spirit and and the the testimony testifies but yeshua called and he said again so we have this in three gospels here suffer little children to come to me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of Elohim, of the elohim right right and right here verily i say to you whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim, of ha elohim notice he's saying the kingdom of elohim Right? Remember, Elohim, according to Robeno, our rabbi, Yeshua Hanotri, according to Yeshua, he said that Elohim is Ruach, spirit. So we're talking about consciousness. We're talking about spirituality. As a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So you might find ones who might be clear like their natural descent. You know, this is where it says that not all who are of Israel, Yisrael, are Yisrael. And because they are of the seed of Abraham, they're not all children and they're not all sons. All right, this is one of those reasons because even the same thing, nothing new under the sun. Right, John 13, 33, little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said to the high Yehudim, 
right? Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, now, why couldn't they go there? Because it's, it's, a, it's a spirituality, right? It's a consciousness thing. My little children, whom I travail in birth again until Moshiach, be formed and you notice the language here in Galatians 4 and 19 my little children of whom this is Hawaria Paulos the apostles of the Gentiles Paul our brother Rav Rav Shaul right he's saying that he's travailing in birth as he was teaching and ministering right with those who were coming forward he was as one giving birth right but until Moshiach no it says until Christ it didn't say Christ Jesus Right, or Jesus Christ, he is speaking about Moshiach, right, Messiah, right, Messiah be formed in you, right, so not talking about literally physically formed, but spiritually, psycho-spiritually, in our soul and in our spirit formed in us, and this is a part of the regeneration, this is a part of the, we say the new birth right here, then my little children, these things right I to you, that ye sin not, that you don't uck up, that you don't be caught lacking, See, that you sin not, that you lack not. And if any man sin lack or be caught lacking, we have an advocate with Ha'ab, with the Father, Yeshua HaMoshiach, HaTzadik, Yeshua the Messiah, HaTzadik, right? The Zadok, the, the righteous. I write to you, little children, because your sins, your uckery, your lacks, your falling short, because even this misattribution of the fried chicken to the Leviticus chapter 2 quote is a sin, is a uckery. It's, it's, you're lacking there because it's, it's not right and accurate, right? But they're forgiven you for his, right? For his name's sake, right? For his name's sake, Bashem Yeshua, right? I write to you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning, from the Bereshith, right? I write to you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one, the Rasha, the defiant one. I write to you little children because ye have known Ha'ab, that ye have known the father. Little children, it is the last time and as ye all have heard that Antichrist, Anti-Moshiach, shall come even now there are many anti moshias antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time the antichrist all those who are against christ in his kingly character for example first john 2 28 and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming that's why we receive the new name, that precious name, new name Rastafari, what Babylon feel like, called chosen and faithful, right? Black Hebrew, Israelite, Rastafari, right? First John 3 and 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, right? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Right? Well, we're not just going to say, well, we love our brothers and we're Israelites, we got to work things out, so on and so on, and then hold back. But in the deed, right, this deed, this presentation, presenting the truth, right? Ye are of Hilehim, Hilo Elohim, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you. Remember Christ, Moshiach, Messiah being formed in us? This is the true Hebrew spirituality in you than he that is in the world. Last verse. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Keep yourselves from a dolon. A dolon. Now, it's interesting right here, a dolon, right? It says idols here, but in the rhema word is these ideologies. There's a lot of these ideologies. Right, and among some of the camps, these kind of ideologies come out, you know, like among many of the black Hebrew Israelites, or certain ideologies, the one West says, so like half truths. Right, we do know that some things are true that many of the brothers in the different camps preach or proclaim, but there's a lot of the half bake, it's the half bake and the half truth things that people seem to give more emphasis in proclaiming as truth than those common denominators of our common black Hebrew and Israelite roots.
right so right here 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 a little bit more on this a little bit more to come brothers and sisters sisters and brothers shalom chavarim shalom like share and subscribe Yes, and check us out at lojs.org or the contact there as well. A little delayed on following some ones and ones. Please give I and I time. You know, um, the harvest is ready. You know, calling more laborers into the field in Yahweh Hey Sabaot's name, right? Yahweh Sabaot, Jehovah Sabaot. Supply more co-laborers into the vineyard. Shalom Chabarim. Shalom.